the October 22nd, 2019 meeting of the Ways and Means Committee will now come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Ancello. Here. Mr. Bra. Here. Chairman Delahaney. Here. Mrs. Draw. Here. Mr. Felder. Here. Ms. Cayley. Here. Mr. Mafucci. Here. Mr. Marinetti is excused. Mr. Morelli. Here. Mr. Rockow. Here. Ms. Taylor. Here. President Carbone. Here. Okay. Will legislator Draw please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any speakers signed up for public forum? There are not. Is there anyone here who would like to address the committee at this time? Okay. The next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. You have the minutes from the September 24th, 2019 meeting before you. They will stand approved unless the clerk is notified of any changes by the end of the day. The next item on the agenda is new business. Mr. Clerk. Referral 19-0244. Moved by Legislator Draw, seconded by Legislator Rockow. Is there any discussion? Legislator Bra. To the administration, I just have one question. I was uh, uh, watching the um, previous committee meetings, but uh, this uh, uh, contract is to uh, gather data, to collect and analyze data for combat, combat, combating the opioid overdose. Will this data be collected? That's going to be collected, going to be shared with the public. Through the through the chair, um, Jennifer Curley from the sheriff's office. Um, the data will be submitted to um, the feds, and if the feds allow us to share the data then of course we can share it but I believe we have to have approval from them since they are funding it and it is kind of their program. Okay. Um, through the chair of the administration, will we at the county have access to that data? Through the chair, yes. We are the ones collecting the data and we're sharing it with RIT to analyze. Okay. So, so essentially um, you're sharing with um, the feds, you're sharing with RIT, um, but I'm assuming you're also sharing with the University of Baltimore as well, correct? Through the chair? Through the chair, that is correct. They are the um, funding of the. They are the funding source. Well, they are the. What's it? Um, the middleman, I guess, of the grant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so through the chair of the administration, even though um, we're collecting data about our public and we're sharing with the feds, we won't get any sort of uh, final report or anything like that through the chair. Through the chair, did you say final report? Or well, uh, a summary report an explanation of the data gathered, that sort of thing, through the chair? Through the chair, that is part of the contract with RIT to okay. give us. So through questions. the chair of the administration, while uh, we have to have permission from the feds to share information with the public apparently, will the county legislature receive any sort of information from this data through the chair? Through the chair, I can certainly find out. <laughs> I can ask. Okay, that's fair. I mean, I, I appreciate you may not know that, but if you could, through the chair, I'd appreciate that. And uh, can that be done prior to uh, the full ledge meeting through the chair? Through the chair, they don't even have a contract yet. Oh, to fair do the enough. Report, so. Okay. Well, whenever you can, then through the chair. Through the chair, I, um, yes, I will get it to you. Or I'll, I'll get an answer to you, um, and I will let you know before the next one. All right. Thank you. Okay. Is there any? Oh, uh, Legislator Kaylee. <laughs> of the report itself, uh, when do you expect that um, the University of Baltimore or the, the research will actually be done and compiled and um, finished, I guess? Through the chair, I believe the RFQ, we said that they had to have it completed at the end of January. 2000. 20. 20 through, the chair? through the chair, 2020, that's correct. All right, thank you. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 19-0245. Moved by Legislator Rockow, seconded by Legislator Ancello. Is there any discussion? Legislator Roth. 
Um, through you to the administration, um, can uh, non-participating, non-WIC residents get child car safety, uh, child car seats checked for safety through this program? Is it open to all? Through the chair, um, our traffic safety specialist gets referrals from the WIC program. She has to have them. That's part of the grant, the condition of the grant. So it must come through WIC then, okay. Thank you very much. Legislator Cayley. Thank you, through the chair. Um, is it safe to say that the estimated cost per unit or per child seat is, is around $120 or am I too high or too low? Um, through the chair, probably about the average. She buys a variety of different sizes and, you know, for different ages, groups and stuff. So. All right, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 19-0246. Moved by Legislator Ancelo, seconded by President Carbone. Is there any discussion? Legislator Baroth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to the administration, the referral references um, that this uh, will pay for training and acquisition of equipment. What do we anticipate we will be acquiring in terms of equipment through the chair? Through the chair, Deputy Public Safety Director Tim Colmeyer. Uh, that's assorted equipment related to uh, fire rescue work, extrication equipment, uh, search and rescue. Uh, we can be more specific with that if you need that. Uh, just when you say assorted equipment, for example, just an example would be nice to the chair. A respirator, helmets. Through the chair, the uh, grant will be covering uh, emergency management's uh, sustainment of our web EOC product, um, hazmat team operations related to uh, gas detection equipment and chemical detection equipment and protective equipment. Okay, thank you, that makes sense. Um, and then finally, through the chair, I note that uh, this is, uh, if, correct me if I'm wrong, a uh, grant for three years uh, for 444,000. Um, is that for uh, amount of money going to be spread over um, three separate budgets or just a place in 2019 budget and use there through the chair? Through the chair, it's spread out over the three years. Okay, thank you. Okay. Legislator Morelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to the administration, <clears throat> with, the, uh, with the funding for the equipment, is there additional money or money used in this grant that'll be used for training purposes? Or does that come out of the county's uh, budget? There's no, uh, there's no training in this one, so any, uh, any of that type of training uh, through the chair would be done out of uh, either uh, county dollars for if it's county employees, but much of the application here is for um, city police, city fire, uh, or some of our county fire partners. So it'll be through for whoever, whatever department is receiving the equipment? Through the chair, that's correct. Thank you. Okay, Legislator Cayley. Um, through you, Mr. Chairman, to the administration. Um, is some of the monies being used um, to replace retired equipment? Through the chair, most of this is uh, expansion to address emerging terrorism hazards. Okay. Through the chair to the administration, okay. Maintain and enhance the wide operation. Blah, 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 blah. Is any of this grant being used to purchase equipment? Through the chair, yes. And of the equipment that's being purchased, is it being used to replace equipment that's being retired? Through the chair, no. Thank you. And um, through the chair, 
is there any portion of the equipment coming in that is new that would require training that would be paid through the county dollars? Uh, through the chair, yes and no. So other than the sheriff's office, and that's in the other, the SLE PP grant. Uh, no, through this grant, no. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 19-0247. Moved by President Carbone, seconded by Legislator Taylor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 19-0248. Moved by Legislator T Taylor, seconded by Legislator Draw. Is there any discussion? Legislator Barraw. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you to the administration, um, is the community, uh, the, the comprehensive plan developed by the community uh, corrections uh, office complete through the chair? Through the chair, uh, Larry Maddow, Chief Probation Officer from Monroe County, and yes, the, um, it is completed. Thank you. Through the chair of the administration, is that comprehensive plan publicly available? Through the chair, I would have to check uh, with DCGS to make sure that I could share that publicly. Okay. Thank you. Through the chair administration, then, uh, more specifically, um, can you share that with uh, the uh, legislature? Through the chair, again, with permission from DCGS, yes, I could. Um, then I would make that request uh, that we have that comprehensive plan prior to the next full legislative meeting. Through the chair, yes. Okay. Thank you. Secondly, um, the $3.7 million grant, it's going to be utilized to implement the uh, comprehensive plan, correct, through the chair? Through the chair, that's correct. Thank you. Will that $3.7 million be enough to fully implement the comprehensive plan through the chair? Through the chair, we certainly anticipate it will be. Um, it's based on the numbers of arrests that we see coming through our office, and it's kind of speculative to, to know how that's going to pan out. But by your best estimate, at least, that $3.7 million ought to be sufficient through the chair? Through the chair, yes. Um, we used uh, prior arrest numbers to come up with that figure. Thank you. And then through the chair of the administration, although we have a comprehensive plan and we have $3.7 million, what exactly is going to be done with the $3.7 million through the chair? Through the chair, uh, the comprehensive plan is uh, threefold, really. It, um, it would allow, utilize a combination of increased staffing resources um, with specialized training included and expanded community programs and services. Thank you. And through the chair of the administration, how much uh, of that $3.7 million would be used for increased staffing? Through the chair, I don't have a calculator here with me, but there's two, it's broken up. So it would be uh, $1,022,123 for salaries and 906410 for fringe benefits for those salaries. Thank you. Through the chair of the administration, are those going to be new positions? Through the chair, yes, they will be um, new positions within our department. Thank you. Through the chair of the administration, how many new positions will that be? Through the chair, that is um, 16 total. Through the chair, do you mean 16 FTE equivalent, or, or is, is that what you mean, through the chair? Through the chair, yes, I mean uh, 16 full-time full -time employees, okay. yes. And then through the chair of the administration, you mentioned the other major piece was uh, uh, community programming. What sort of community programming are we referring to through the chair? Through the chair, do you want me to list out what the programming that we're going to see? Sure. Yeah, thank um, you. Yes, um, there's quite a few. Um, respite, mediation, mentoring, youth court or teen court, problem sexual behavior treatment, specialized substance abuse assessment and intervention, functional family therapy, multi-systemic therapy, and credit recovery. 
That's through cool. the chair of the administration, when you say credit recovery, do you mean financial credit recovery? Through the chair that's uh, uh, school, oh, school, school credit recovery Thank for you. high school students that may be um, behind due to lost time of, of due to truancy or whatever lost time, we, um, we're going to set up a program to help them catch up with their credits. Thank you. And then finally, through the chair of the administration, this is a grant that lasts for one year. Um, what happens after that one year is up? Will these programs still and positions still be in existence or is, will not through the chair? Through the chair, we certainly expect um, DCJS to continue with funding for Raise the Age. Okay, so we anticipate the funding will continue um, from outside our, our resources through the chair? Through the chair, yes. <laughs> uh, Legislator Morelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to the administration, <clears throat> are there other organizations outside of the county that you'll be partnering with? Through the chair, yes. We will uh, be um, putting out RFPs for some of these services. We also will be doing some of the services in-house. And through you, is there any way that, could you tell us some of those services that will be handled outside of the county? Through the chair, um, all of the ones I just mentioned. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 19-0249. Moved by Legislator Draw, seconded by Legislator Rockow. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 19-0250. Moved by Legislator Rockow, seconded by Legislator Ancello. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please in. Oh, I'm sorry. Legislator Kaylee. I didn't look in the second row. Like a hand with a thumb on it. <laughs> sorry. It's okay. Ready? I'm ready. All right, thank you. Through you to the administration. Um, with this particular grant monies, uh, are these additional, is it staffing uh, these positions additional to what's already staffed? Through the chair, this is to continue existing staffing. So at this point, we still have one nutritionist and three public health, or am I incorrect? Through the chair. Through the chair, through this contract, yes, that's what we have. In addition to our Monroe County staff. Thank you, and then through the chair, could you give me a ballpark of what that staff number is? Nutritionists versus? Through the chair. Um, I. If I look at my uh, my staffing chart, I could give you an exact number, but approximately um, we have two levels of nutritionists, a nutritionist and a nutritionist two. Between those two categories, probably 11 nutritionists, and we have three nutrition assistant positions and some clerical staff, in addition to this contract staff. Thank you. And then through the chair to the administration, um, as I read this, my assumption is this outreach is countywide and for anyone that's receiving WIC. Is that correct? Through the chair, yes, that's correct. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 19-0251. Moved by Legislator Ancello, seconded by President Carbone. Is there any discussion? Legislator Barat. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through the Chair of the Administration, this is a, a four-year contract, um, or a grant, actually. Um, what's supposed to occur during the first year of this grant? Through the Chair, um, that is still in process, and the grantor has not specified those um, activities yet. Okay. Through the Chair of the Administration, um, the information and data that uh, is gathered through this, um, this process, will that information be made public through the Chair? Through the Chair, that, uh, that um, will be made available, yes. It will be. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 19-0252. Moved by President Carbone, seconded by Legislator Taylor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 19-0253. 
Moved by Legislator Taylor, seconded by Legislator Draw. Is there any discussion? Legislator Barra. Yes, thank you. Um, through the chair of the administration, and this kind of applies for both this referral and the next referral, um, why is this um, um, grant for a uh, period of 23 months as opposed to 24 months? It just seems odd. To the chair, Jennifer Curley, um, the state just <coughs> changed the, the time frame. They didn't give me a reason. They just changed it. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I could not hear you. Through the state, uh, through the chair, the state just changed the time frame and they took off a month. I'm not sure why they didn't give an explanation. A crazy state. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 19-0254. Moved by Legislator Draw, seconded by Legislator Rockow. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 19-0255. Moved by Legislator Rockow, seconded by Legislator Ancello. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Legislator Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through the administration. Um, on the current contract, um, are the, uh, la the tablets that we have in the current contract, are they leased to us or are they owned by the company, the last, the company that's leaving? Uh, through the chair, Paul Simonelli from the sheriff's office, uh, the ones that are being used right now are uh, provided by Aramark. Whether they own them or lease them from some other source, I don't know, but uh, there's no leasing cost to us built into that. Thank you, and I, I believe you answered this in the last committee through the chair uh, that there are firewalls in in these uh, in the tablets themselves to uh, regulate the content um, available to the prisoners. Am I correct, through the chair? Uh, through the chair, it, it's a closed uh, it's a closed system, so it, it's not there's not access to uh, the internet directly through these. Thank you. And then through the chair, is the capability there for doing word processing in an old answer? And then saving one's worth, work through the chair. Through the chair. Uh, right now, we're in the uh, uh, review stage of, of what capabilities we're going to put on each one of the tablets. But there will be, I, I imagine there's going to be, whether we call it word processing or some form of being able to uh, uh, create documents on there. Uh, I anticipate that they'll, they'll be, that'll be part of it as to uh, being able to save it. So to clarify, as I said, the tablets are free to be used. Now, people do not keep the tablets 24 hours a day. They're passed out at a certain time and collected at a certain time. If you want to have a tablet that you store information on, there is a one-time charge the first day of the month of $5, and then you have uh, that same tablet returned to you for the next 30 days uh, so that if you are building content on there uh, you will have it. Also if you're buying purchasing content that'll also make it available that content to you uh, during that time period. Thank you and just a couple more I'm sorry. Um, through the chair to the administration, it, all in all, I like what's happening here, um, but I do have a couple questions, and one of them speaks to what is the procedure if an inmate actually destroys one of the units? How is that handled through this contract? Uh, through the chair, if we establish that uh, an inmate is responsible for damaging or destroying, then they will there's uh, disciplinary rules within the jail uh, for dealing with any infractions and that would become part of that uh, pr that would become part of that system then to deal with it through the infraction process in the jail. All right, thank you and then through the chair. Would there be uh, a, a fine included? Through the chair, I'm uh, Matt Bandage, the superintendent of jail. There's a uh, charge for a substantiated infraction, so that's uh, a couple dollars, and then uh, 
if we determine through investigation that uh, it was uh, intentional and uh, we would certainly attempt to uh, charge the inmate with, for the cost of the tablet. Okay, thank you. And just, just because you mentioned it uh, through the chair, if an inmate could not afford the $5 charge for the 30 day, and I thought it was longer than that, um, 30 day use of it, uh, they could, it, they would be in the situation where they, if they were building um, documents or history or what have you, would they be able to request the same unit if, if it were available? In other words, they wouldn't have paid the $5, but if all the units were not used, uh, through the chair, they might uh, they might request if they get number two or whatever it is. But uh, if they don't pay the five dollar uh, one time fee for the month, it's not a guarantee. Through the chair, but it could be a possibility if they're not all, all in use. Uh, certainly, and I and I think some of that uh, some of the information is uh, if I was to switch tablets, if I had a five dollar fee and for some reason uh, that tablet broke and I received another one, I, I believe the information would pass on. Um, it follows my identification number. So. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Legislator Bra. Administration, um, what is the approximate cost to a value of one of the tablets? Through the share, I I don't know. Uh, we don't pay for them; they're provided by the company. So I understand, but through the chair administration, it was just stated that if an inmate damaged one of those uh, specifically intentionally, that um, we would try to uh, find them that amount of, or that value. And when we're talking about a dollar here or five dollars there, you know, a tablet could easily cost a couple hundred dollars. So it's, an, it's a, a large amount of money in that environment. And so my question is, is that what the intent is, is if that destruction occurs intentionally, someone gets mad, they throw it out the wall, things like that. How is that going to play out on, frankly, the economy of the uh, that individual's, you know, I don't know, commissary account? Through the chair is um, obviously before we, you know, get the contract finalized, we'll find out how much uh, the tablet cost the county or not the county, pardon me, the uh, the company that uh, provides it to us, and uh, if uh, someone intentionally uh, destroys uh, the item, we certainly would make an attempt to uh, uh, get the money back and give it to the company. Um, if, in fact, they didn't have the funds, then we would uh, uh, keep the uh, debit on, on file. So if, in chance, he comes back, we would uh, continue to take his funds until it's paid for. So through the trade administration, part of the contract is to hold the company um, harmless from damage caused by the inmates? Through the chair, no, that, that's not the case. I, I think what the superintendent was trying to clarify is that people are held accountable for their actions disciplinary infractions in the jail. Uh, it's not a part of the contract to okay. uh, that we have to do that, but it's part of holding someone accountable for their actions. Okay, well, and, and, and I'm not trying to tread on toes about how do people accountable. I just didn't, I would be nervous if it was part of the contract through the chair. Uh, through the chair, no, that's completely internal disciplinary process. Which is a separate question. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Legislator Felder. Good evening. Um, through you, uh, Mr. Chairman, to the uh, administration. The, uh, I asked the question earlier and got the answer that if, in fact, um, inmates do not have money in their account and need to make phone calls, is it true they will be allowed to make phone calls? Uh, through the chair, I don't have the number in front of me, but there are thousands of minutes of phone calls every year that are done at no charge to uh, inmates. And that can be, there's obviously the ones that are uh, to their attorneys or to other people that uh, they're required to speak with. It, if you're asking, uh, does it happen, people that are trustees um, that will get access to free phone calls that are, are providing some services to help out with things in the jail. And what I would, I would say to you, uh, legislator, is that the, the guards have a first-hand knowledge of the people they're entrusted with uh, their security and safety, and they're the best ones to judge. Uh, if someone needs it, they have the capability of offering that uh, in, if there is a situation, for instance, a death in the family or a child's birthday or something. 
Um, and sometimes that free phone call may be to call someone to try to get some money into their commissary account. So there's, uh, there are, like I said, I don't have the number here, but uh, we do track, and it's quite a large number uh, of dollars spent giving out free phone calls currently. Through you, Mr. Chairman, my, my concern is given, first, given the amount of money that's in the trust fund, but secondly, um, want to make sure, I, knowing as someone who grew up with family in, who, who are sometimes incarcerated, and knowing, that, knowing the burden that, that can place on families and may not be able to necessarily give them money or have enough money for them to be able to make phone calls, just on a, like maybe once a week or so would, where an inmate could actually just call and just, to, just so they can keep in touch with their family and see how they're doing and they can have that dialogue. Is that, is that a possibility? Uh, through, the, through the chair, there currently isn't a policy uh, relating to a commitment to that. Um, as the legislature, legislator is uh, aware this would create a, a record keeping and other requirement in order to track this, uh, and I would tell you that, uh, that it's my understanding that, once again, uh, when people are in duress and they, there is a situation that it's quite generously given to them, where my concern would be, for instance, if a person, if we did create a program like that and an infrastructure to monitor that, that that might be a limiting factor if, for instance, there's a, a need for more than one 10 minute phone call a week or something. So we don't, we don't want that to be, I don't know that that making that the standard would enhance things. I, it might be more of a limiting factor uh, if, you know, it, the response could be, well, you get one call a week, you've already made it, where right now uh, deputies and supervisors are making a judgment based on their discussions with and their knowledge of the situation of the inmate in uh, determining when they can advance them uh, a free phone call. And through you, Mr. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm not, I do appreciate that. And I, and I like that policy, but I'm saying that I would like to at least see something that that'd be something you would explore doing just for those who really don't have the money and just want to have a regular, not, not necessarily an emergency, just want to be able to talk to their family. You know, they may have, may have a child, a young child that's in school or, you know, just want to keep that contact and that, you know, that regular dialogue. We, that really is important to this referral, I don't think. I don't believe. I believe, I believe it's very relevant. Uh, I'll let the, the legislator finish up. And this will be my last comment. I just, yeah. just, uh, just my. Uh, through, through the chair, obviously uh, we're willing to consider any recommendation that's uh, given to us and, and in, within the scope of creating, uh, you know, being able to maintain good order and discipline within the jail and uh, fair, fundamental fairness to those that are already paying for it. And I, I would tell you that uh, it is something, and I, I have spoken with uh, uh, senior management, and if it's something you would want us to take a look at, we obviously will take a look at the possibility of doing this, but I, I can't sit here and commit to you that that would become the norm with the current contract or with a new one. Okay. All right. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Are there any other matters to come before the committee? All right. Seeing none. There being no other matters, the October 22, 2019 meeting of the Ways and Means Committee stands adjourned. The next meeting of the Ways and Means Committee will be held on Tuesday, November 26, 2019 at 6 p.m.